So it asks us just simply, uh, it's pretty easy, part A, where it just asks us for the distance between the two at a particular point in time. Straightforward, just Pythagorean theorem you solve when you get the five kilometers. Now B is when it actually starts bringing in your related rates. So notice that you get a point just for your original equation and then two points for the derivative itself. That means you get a third of the points for the first response for just doing the theorem. And part A was pretty easy, so you should pretty easily get four out of those nine points. Now a couple of things, notice that you do lose your points if you do not do chain rule. So if you forget that implicit differentiation after that. Now they've also written in here, so this is how we do it implicitly. Is it gonna draw? Okay. This is how we do it explicitly. Um, you are more than welcome to do it explicitly, but as you can see, it's a little more complicated that way. So I would recommend just sticking with the implicit differentiation. That's why we learned that method because it makes it easier. Also notice that they specify at that specific time, then put in your numbers, just like we've been doing. So don't neglect that part. Right. Now C is talking about um, the angle, the rate of change of the angle. And so for this particular one, because we had dx dt given to us and dy dt given to us, tangent is going to be most beneficial because that's opposite and adjacent. Um, so you could have used either of the other ones because you had to find that remaining rate, but going just based upon our given information, it was easiest to take. Right, so then we have tangent theta equals y over x. Notice that neither of these were a constant, so it did require you to do quotient rule. Raise your hand if you did catch that quotient rule. Good. So quotient rule, we have two variables divided by each other. It's not just dy dt over dx dt, quotient rule. And then once again, specify when we're finding it, or at what point in time. Also, for your response, you do not have to simplify, so you could have stopped back here. Are there questions on this particular response? Um, do you have the derivative correctly here where you have, um, and you might have used a different variable, but 2r dr dt equals 2s dx dt plus 2 r dr dt. Okay. Um, and did you make sure that, so when they tell us that ship A is traveling due west at 15 kilometers per hour, so you fill it to my distance. Yep. Okay. So ship A is going toward the lighthouse rock. My distance is getting smaller, so my rate is negative. Okay. So you should be putting a negative 15. Did you catch the negative 15 for that? Yeah. Okay. So that's probably what happened there. So guys, remember that our rate, we don't look to see what is the direction to determine whether it's positive or negative. We look to see what is happening with my distance. Ship A is getting closer to the lighthouse rock, so its distance is decreasing. So I want that rate to be negative. Ship B is going north away from it, so the distance is increasing. So that rate is positive. Are there other questions on this problem? Okay. Um, so let's go and take a look. Look through your trig related rates for right now. Um, so look through your trig related rates, and then we'll go over questions you still have. For the Daniel find the kite one? For this one here? Yes. Yes, yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, yes. X was. Um, let me grab my key. But yes, Nick, there was there was a I don't know what I'm talking about. 
on the key, um, they forgot to do their implicit with DRDT, and so thus it should be 3 over, negative 3 over 20, not 3 over 200, but we'll still go through that one. Yes, sir. So when you're looking at different angles, you can go ahead and just try to figure out what your angle is supposed to be, what the rate of your angle is supposed to be. Mm -hmm. you know Great question. So for this particular problem, guys, quiet down, please. So for this particular problem, um, we have that the observer is 100 meters from point C. This distance is not changing. The observer is not getting closer and further away. So this is going to be a constant. We can put that in our equation from the start before we do the derivative. Now if I take a look at Y, that's the height of the balloon. That's going to be changing. And X, the distance between the person and the balloon, that's going to be changing. So those two variables are changing. So those need to stay as variables in our equation, whereas this 100 is staying constant, so that can go into our equation. So when we're looking at let's see, part C here, um, so we want d theta dt. So if I use tangent theta, so tangent this is um, opposite over adjacent. Y is changing, so that's why we keep the y. 100 is staying the same, so that's why we do y over 100. Whereas if I would have done let's say sine, we would have had to do sine theta equals y over x because both of those are variables they are changing on the top. So back up, I would say that this guy. Yes. yes. Yes, hold on, let me find my d theta here. Yeah, so for this one, we end up still having one constant, one variable, so I didn't have to do quotient rule. I would just think this is 400x the negative first, mm -hmm. then follow your power rule. Um, for this one, if we would have done, let's see, cosine, that would have been z for, is that y? No, plus x over r. Then that would have been two variables. You would have had to do quotient rule because you have a variable divided by a variable. Okay. Even if you do quotient rule on this, you'll get the same thing. You're just doing more work than you have to. All right, so let's go take a look at example five where we have Maggie. And I'm going to bring over ours because it's a little different than the answer key. Again, the answer key was wrong. If you look here, when they took their derivative, 100 over R. So this is, okay, this is the same thing as 100 R to the negative first. When we do our derivative, we have to bring down that negative, 100 R to the negative second, and then there should be DRDT. Oh, That's so the key was missing that piece, which means you should have gotten an answer of 3 over 20. Whoops. So again, we'll go over this, but if you had that this became negative 3 over 20, you were correct with that. Okay, but let's take a look at that one. Um, oh, sorry, it was positive 3 over 20. So it's increasing at a rate of 3. Okay. So Maggie's competing with Daniel. Daniel's from before flying a okay. kite. Um, and she flies a kite that is 100 feet above the ground. So we have Maggie here. 
and she's flying her kite 100 feet above ground. If the string is being pulled out at a rate of 10 feet per second as the wind carries the kite horizontally away from Maggie, what is the rate of change of the angle that the kite makes with the vertical? So our kite is moving this way, so after some time it continues to go along. And this is a constant 100 feet above the ground. And it says the string is being pulled out at a rate of 10 feet per second. So this represents my string connected to the kite at any point in time. And so this rate is increasing at 10 feet per second. I'm going to go ahead and call this x. That's a horizontal distance. Let's call this z um, for that. Um, questions on the setup? Great question. So it's because it says if the string is being pulled out. So this is not the string. The string is going from uh, Maggie down here to the kite. So it's as the kite's moving along, the string's going to keep getting further and further and further. So the string is being increased at 10 feet per second. It's not that the kite is being blown at 10 feet per second. Whereas the problem before, it says the wind carries the kite horizontally at 30 feet per minute. Um, so our kite here is once again moving um, over here. And it says that the wind carries the height, the kite horizontally. So the kite is moving horizontally at a rate of 30 feet. Isn't that as the kite carries, or as the wind carries the kite horizontally? Yeah, so the wind is carrying it horizontally, and as it moves, that string is getting further and further and further out. If you think about it as if I have a kite and it's right above me, as it moves along and the wind carries it away, the string is going to be increasing. So the key thing is that it says the string is being pulled out at a rate. It's not saying the kite is being moved at a rate. Okay. You see that difference there? All right, other questions on the setup so far? All right. Now, I particularly don't like that they went ahead and put the pi over 6 in here because it's not a constant angle of pi over 6. That's the moment that we're looking at. So I'm just going to scribble that up so we don't get confused with it. And I'm going to call theta that angle that it makes with the vertical. Okay, so let's take a look at what we know. So we know that dz dt is 10 feet per second. I know that y is not going to change in value, that's that constant of 100. x is changing, z is changing, um, so we don't know those variables. And we want the rate of change of the angle. So we want d theta dt, specifically when the angle is pi over 6. So when theta is pi over 6. So we're looking for that rate of change of the angle. We have to use the trig function because we don't have other equations that deal with our theta. Now, I see in my equation, um, I have the rate for z, um, I have a constant y, I do not have a constant x, and I do not have the rate for x. So the most information I have is about y and z, so it's probably going to be in our best interest to use the trig that relates those two. So which trig will relate y and z? Cosine. Cosine, okay. So cosine of theta equals y over z. Since y is constant, that's not changing, but we're going to leave that in our problem as a hint. Z, though, is changing as the kite moves along, the length is changing. So we're going to the Are we good with our trig function in this selection? If you chose one of the other ones, you just would have had to do additional work, like we did during standard, to find the XCT. But cosine would be our best option. Okay. So let's go into our derivative. What's the derivative of cosine? Negative Good job with your negatives. So negative sine theta d theta dt, do not forget that. And I personally prefer to see this with the negative exponent. It's easier for me to do the derivative that way. So I would get negative 100 z to the negative second dz dt. Are we good with that? Now that you're looking at me funny, what don't you like? <laughs> Are you sure? Okay. Stop me if you need me to. Okay, so we want to know specifically at the moment that theta is pi over 6. All right, so let's 
who we've got. Now we have a couple of options of going about um, part of our problem here. So we can take a look at negative sine theta is pi over 6. d theta dt I don't know, that's what I'm solving for. This I can rewrite as negative 100 over z squared. And the z dt was a positive 10 d. All right, what is my z value though? Do I have my z value? No, we don't have that, but we can find it because we're looking just at this moment when theta is pi over 6. I'm going to go draw that situation over here. So I have y is 100, x changes, z changes, and this is pi over 6. Okay, so I need to know what my z value is in this situation here. We've got a couple of options. Um, what is pi over 6 in degrees? 30 degrees, right? So this is just a 30, 60, 90 triangle. So you can go back to what you know from geometry and pre-calc with your special right triangles. We know that in a 30, 60, 90 triangle, we take our short leg and double it to get my hypotenuse. I take my short leg and multiply it by what to get my long leg? Root 3. So short times root 3 is my long, short times 2 is my hypotenuse. You have to remember that. Um, so we can set up that way. My long leg is my short times root 3. So then I would get x is 100 over root 3. And again, my hypotenuse has just doubled that. So then I would know that z is 2 root 3. So that's one way you have of finding this value here. Another way is that you could just go ahead and use trig for this. We want to relate z, and probably the other thing that's easier to relate it to would be 100. What trig function relates those to? Cosine g, the thing that we just chose. So I could just go ahead and do cosine of 30 equals z, whoops, sorry, 100 over z. And thinking of your unit circle, what is cosine? Root 3 over 2. And then just solve for z this way. So we would get z times root 3 equals 200. And as you can see, regardless of which method you use, we get the same thing of z is 200 over root 3. So whether you use your special right triangles or the unit circle, you're going to get the same thing, which makes sense because our unit circle is made up from our special right triangles. That's how it was created. So either way, Use your geometry for trig, and we get that z is going to be 200 over root 3. So I need z squared, so 200 over root 3 squared. Are we good with that question with where that value came from? Okay. So now from here, it's just doing arithmetic to some. Oh, we have to evaluate a trig. Then it's arithmetic to some. What is sine of pi over 6? 1 half. Um, I'm going to clean this up a little bit. Let's see, we've got negative 100 over 1 times the reciprocal, and squaring it, I get 3 over 200 squared times 10. Um, personally, when we're dealing with big numbers like 200 squared, I like to just think of it as 200 times 200, so I'm going to just rewrite it that way. I think it's a little bit easier to work with. All right, so now I can go ahead and simplify. Let's see, we've got that same thing as 1 over 20. So if we simplify the right side, we get negative 3 on top. And 2 times 20 is 40. We have negative 1 half of theta dt. I feel like that's a lot easier to work with than trying to think of all of this mentally. And then we just multiply by negative 2 on both sides to solve 40 theta. Um, we can reduce that. Twenty, and that would be negative one there. So we get a positive three over twenty, and this is radians per second. So the 
rate of change the angle of the of the angle of height makes the vertical is three over twenty radians per second. Or in other words, it changes three radians for every twenty seconds at the moment. So the first get rid of the sum of the Sorry, what did you say? Right here? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I mean, we simplified everything. So we evaluated what sine of pi over 6 was, and then we simplified over here and then solved for d theta dt. We, need, we needed z, so that's what we did over here, was we found z in the context of that situation. So, um, but to, like, Oh, so remember dividing by a fraction is the same thing as multiplying by the reciprocal. Yeah, because on the key, which, you know, which even though it didn't have that extra factor, you would get just having multiply 200 over 3 results. Yeah. Well, because you have 200 over 3 squared, so that gives you 200 squared over 3. And then that's what we've multiplied by the reciprocal of here. No, it's because it's multiplied on the key, it was multiplied by 200 over reciprocal over the um, for three for both sides. I'm not sure what you Yeah, I don't know. Um, I'll come to you and take a little bit more. Yes, I saw it too. Um, so, you can have the three dots that are just like there for all the blocks and half of the map, or just come to the right side right after the show. Uh, like, do you have to say therefore, yada yada? Um, so, once you've done all your math, I would say at the bottom, you could just go ahead and answer from there. Therefore is not necessary, it's just nice. And then with the problem, once you get to the negative one half, you just remove the one half back over to that side and just think about it. Yep. So, for response, you could have just simply done times negative two and be done and not simplify. So just remember, guys, in our free response, no complex fractions and no tree. So we have to evaluate the tree, and we have to make this so it's not a complex fraction. The easiest thing to do is just multiply by the reciprocal. So we could even let this as root 3 over 200 quantity squared as well. There. Um, also, I actually want to go off what you said there with the sentence. So uh, someone was asking last class about when we have to write sentences and when we don't. Um, I highly recommend any time that the question already indicates something about it decreasing that you answer it with a sentence. Um, if we take a look at that ship question, though, yeah, this time. You'll notice that for both B and C, it just says find the rate of change, find the rate of change. There's no wording that indicates whether it's positive or negative, increasing or decreasing. And so they just went ahead and answered it as just straight the answer. Um, so d theta dt equals 17 over 5 radians per hour, dr dt equals negative 6 kilometers per hour. Now, if the question were to say, find the rate at which the distance between the two ships is decreasing, come back at that with a sentence. So you can say, the rate at which the distance between the two ships is deep, or the distance between the two ships is decreasing at a rate of six kilometers per hour. So if they have the wording that already indicates that negative, I'd say just play it safe, answer it with the sentence saying decreasing at that value, or you can say rate of change of negative six. But since both of these just use the wording, find the rate of change, find the rate of change, um, you don't have to worry about making it like changing it if it was negative. When in doubt, put the sentence, but most times what I've seen on the AP exam is they just say find the rate of change, which allows you to just answer it. Does that make sense with that? What do you say? Like no sentence. Yeah, so like these ones, if you look, they did not require sentence for that. Um, but I would just say be careful if it has the word like find at which the rate at which it's decreasing. I would answer that with a sentence just to make sure that they understand it's not decreasing at the negative rate, decreasing just the normal rate. Yeah. Um, so Nick, in solving for this problem here, because it was dividing by 200, they just multiplied it on both sides so that we wouldn't have the complex fraction. So and then they the so mm -hmm. I can mean, still multiply both sides of it, then I can multiply both sides like this. So I can multiply both sides like this, and then it's... Yeah, yeah, we have your questions. Yeah, so I mean, I'm going to write... just simplifying it. Yeah, I'm going to write... 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 Yeah, I'm going to write...
Are we good with example five? Okay, so let's take a look at the last page for your spots, and Nick, you said part B. Yeah, because I mean, I tried to make a piece of like similar problems with the standard button. Okay, so we're going to do the Track of how many times it pauses and blinks. That was one. Okay. okay. So part B for this one said find the rate of change in the area of the triangle at the instant when y is 50. So working with we're working with um, a right triangle, so area is one half base times height. Okay, so area is one half base times height in this problem. Um, so that would be our base is 100. And my height is changing, so we keep that variable y. So one half times the 100 is what gives me the 50. Are you okay with No, with it's not having product rule up here. But we don't end up having to do product rule here because we have that constant, the base does not change in length. It stays at a constant. So I don't have to do product rule up here constant? Well, yeah, because we only have one variable then. So you don't have to do product rule when there's only a variable. Which again, you can do product rule at 50 and y, it's going to give you this. Yes, Luke? Oh, um, you just saw, like, to plug in the piece of each variable before you get the two Oh, be careful. We didn't plug in 50 before. Um, we weren't plugging in 50 for y. Our a value was 100, and half oh, of 100 yeah. was the 50. Yeah, that's what I meant. How do you decide that you plug that in? Okay. So here it says we've got this guy watching the balloon, and the observer is 100 meters from point C. The observer is not walking back and forth, the observer is staying put. So this distance is staying a constant 100. It's a fixed amount. It's not, that distance is not changing. Our height of our balloon, why that is changing, so we have to use the variable for that. X, the distance between the observer and the balloon is changing, so we have to leave that as X. But this distance of 100, I'm 100 feet away from the wall over there. I'm not moving, so that distance is not changing. We can put in that constant. So just like on day one, any constant values, any fixed amounts, we can put those numbers in right away before we take the derivative. Does that make sense? All right. Um, Nick, were you good then with B there? I mean, because what's it just be about other than the other one we're doing state because so during Stinger, we didn't have a constant value. During Stinger, we had um, both our base and our height were changing. Neither one was a constant fixed value, so we couldn't put in a number for it. We had to do product. Here, my base is staying the same of 100 no matter what, so that's why we can go and do it. Do we have other questions on this for your response? Oh, we've got to put on here. Other questions on our trig questions? I think we've gone over all of it now. Any questions? Okay. Now take a look back at your day one related rate stuff and just look see if you have any questions on those. Yes. This is, um, well, it's not because it's staple. Stop. What did you say, Nick? Example 12. Example 12? Oh. Uh, yeah, it said example 12, I put skip, so don't worry about that. Yes, oh, instead of two? Yes. Okay. What did you ask, Nick? 13, oh, 13, you have a question. Okay. Ooh, is this one of your fancy, nice writing pens? <laughs> like this? Okay. Why isn't it? Okay. Dash. This is eighth period, right? This is going to be like my best initials ever. That was thrilling. Thank you. Okay. Okay, so I yeah, okay, we'll take a look at that one. So guys, let's go and take a look on day one. Example, okay, I forget. Did you say four, Alex? Okay, example four and example 13. So let's start off with example four, and then we'll go to 13.
All right. So example four and the problem before it, example three, both dealt with similar shapes. So keep in mind that sometimes that's the equation that you have to use. Um, for example, three, that was the equation that we need to use to relate the variables, unless we do the derivative of it. For example, four, we needed that uh, equation to help us solve for one of our variables to put into the volume. So just keep in mind if you have similar shapes to set up that proportion. All right. So for example here, example four, we have water going into this tank, and thus the volume of the water is increasing there. So our volume is coming in at nine feet cubed per minute, since that is feet cubed, that gives an indication that we're talking about volume. Um, so our dvdt is that nine feet cubed per minute. And then it says that the tank itself, what it holds, is 10 feet high and 5 feet of uh, per radius. And we're going to use that information to help us uh, make the volume a little bit easier to work with. And then they want to know how fast is the water level rising. So how fast is dhdt um, when our height is 6? Okay. So if we take a look at just our volume problem, we have both R and H. And although we could do our derivative with product rule here, I don't know dr dt. And I don't know dhdt. So our issue is that we don't know that dr dt. So we need something else to be able to make that a little bit simpler to work with. So with our similar shapes, make sure you're comparing uh, like pieces. So we said phi, the radius of the big cone to r, the radius of the small cone, equals 10, the height of the big cone, to h, the height of the small cone. Again, you can set this up in a different way. I could have said 5 to 10 equals r to h, or 10 to 5 equals h to r, um, just as long as you're maintaining that same order. So we have 5 to r is h, sorry, 10 to h. So big cone to small, big cone to small. So we use this to solve for eight, or sorry, to solve for r. So that way, this equation here will only be in terms of h. Does that make sense? How would that be? So now, when I do my volume, I will have dvdt and dhdt, which is what we know and what we want. Whereas if I would have done it up here, I would have had drdt, which we know nothing about. So then we can go ahead at the moment when h is six. My volume is coming in at a rate of 9, my height is 6, and DHUT is what we're solving for. And then we just simplify the other So again, guys, if you have similar shapes, you're probably going to have to use it in some way, shape, or form. Are you good with that one? Okay. Other questions on example 4 before we go to 13? So let's take a look at example 13b. This is one that was not required for you to do. But they're not similar shapes, though. They're not similar shapes, you're correct. Okay, so let's actually just go and go through this one. So coffee is drained from a conical filter into a cylindrical coffee pot at a rate of 10 inches cubed per minute. Okay, so we've got two different shapes happening here. So I'm going to go ahead and even though coffee is brown, we're going to consider it blue today. Coffee is disgusting anyway, so. Yeah. Oh, I've lived and it's gross. Every single time. It smells terrible, too. Give me hot chocolate. I've made it through high school, undergrad, and graduate school without coffee. It can be done. It might be rough, but it can be done. Okay, so it tells us that coffee is draining from our cone into our coffee pot at the rate of 10 inches cubed per minute. What is this 10 representing? What rate is it talking about? Volume. Okay. Volume. So we've got inches cubed, so it means volume. So for my cone here, is dvdt going to be positive or negative? Negative. Negative. We're losing that volume. But it's coming into here at that same rate, so my dvdt down here, is that going to be positive or negative? Yeah, it's that positive 10. So it's the same rate leaving as it is Okay, right, so part A says, how fast is the level in the pot rising when the coffee in the filter is five inches deep? So they asked you to find something about the coffee pot, but they give me the point in time of our So let's take a look at that. So let's see, how fast is the level in the pot rising? All right, I'm going to go ahead and clean this up a little bit. I don't really care about diameter. I prefer radius. And... Radius six. Our height is changing. 
So our, sorry, our radius is three here. Our radius here is three, but for my coffee and the coffee filter, my radius will be changing. And my height here is six, and this height is changing. Okay, so it says how fast is the level in the pot rising? So we're looking at this guy down here. Um, so we've got our volume equation. So volume of a cylinder is area of the base. My base is a circle. So pi r squared times my height. Okay. Um, with my coffee pot down here, is my radius changing? No. no, it stays at a fixed three. So I can go ahead and put that in as three squared because it's not changing. Is my height changing? Yeah, so I need to leave that as h. Okay. So what I really have is volume is 9 pi h. Okay. And we need to find something about the how fast is the level in the pot rising. So we're looking for dh. Let's go into our derivative. Vdt equals 9 pi dh dt. And so now we want to know this when the coffee in the filter is 5 inches deep. So if we take a look at this, this is with the coffee in the filter. So that's when our H from the filter equals 5. Well, take a look at my volume equation here. Do I have any variables other than my rates? No. So it doesn't really matter how high or low my coffee is up here. My rate of change is going to be the same because it only depends upon the rate of change in my volume. So this actually didn't make any difference for us. So let's fill in what we have. DVDT for my coffee pot is a positive term. 9 pi and DHDT is what we're trying to solve. So DHDT is 10 over 9 pi. So we have the level in the pot is rising at a rate of 10 over 9 pi. And our units are inches from it. For this particular problem, I would suggest you definitely end with the sentence answering it because if you've noticed, I've used the same variables to represent um, the different things there. So the HDT, if you just say DHDT equals that, I don't know which feature you're talking about. Okay, questions on part A. Okay. So now part B says how fast is the level in the filter? decreasing at this time. All right, so in my filter here, again, I have volume is pi r squared times my height. Um, now my volume we know is changing. Is my radius of this coffee changing? Yeah, because it's, the coffee is uh, going, it's decreasing, so my radius here is changing, so we have to keep that variable r. It's my height of that coffee changing. Yeah, so we have to keep that variable h. Thus, we run back into the problem of if I were to do it right now as is, I would have to deal with drdt and dhdt. And I don't know drdt. So let's talk about what else we can do with this. I do have a cone within a cone. These are similar shapes here. So I can use that um, proportion of similar shapes to help me get rid of my R value and substitute with H. So I'm going to go ahead and do this. So once again, I'm just going to go radius of the big over radius of the small equals height of the big over height of the small. So I'm using, I'm going to use a second equation and substitute it in so I don't have to deal with my R. All right, so when I cross multiply, I get 3h equals 6r. So then let's see, we want to solve for r. So r is 1 half h h. I'm going to take this and put it in for my r squared equation. Questions on what I just did there? This is similar to how we did that cone one um, a couple of problems ago. So again, my volume equation alone has too much happening, too many variables that I don't know the rates of. So I want to use similar shapes, the coffee inside the filter, um, set up that proportion so I can substitute it in. So now my volume equation is going to be much easier to work with pi r squared, so h over 2 squared, um, times 5. Questions? Yes. 
Oh my goodness, I used the same bottom equation. Yikes. Thank you. And, then, and my mind, I was like, gee, I thought that there was a three in there somewhere, but then I just figured I was going crazy. Um, sorry, so our cone bond equation is actually just a third of our cylinder equation. So I'm just going to sneak that guy in there. Thank you. Whew, yikes, that would have been terrible. I'll go ahead and buy it. Okay, much better. Other questions? Thank you. A little bit of extra money. Okay, so now let's just go and clean this up a little bit. Um, so we have pi over 3, h squared over 4, so pi over 12, a squared times h is h cubed. Now we can see our equation is much nicer to work with. When we do our derivative, we will only have db dt, which we know, and dh dt, which is what we're trying to write. Okay, so how fast is it decreasing at this time? So let's go into our derivative, db dt. Bring down my 3, so I get pi over 4 h squared dh dt. And now we want to know this specifically when it said at this time, and the time is when my height is 5 inches. Okay. So now we just substitute in our values. Now be careful, our rate of change for volume in this problem is negative 10 because the volume is decreasing. And then we just simply substitute it and solving we get dh dt equals so we have a negative 10 on top let's see what do we get 25 pi over 4 so multiply by the reciprocal 4 over 25 pi and why not let's reduce it negative 8 over 5 pi. And this is height, so our unit interesting. Now, notice again the wording here. It said how fast is the level decreasing? So we want to say it is decreasing at a rate of 8 over 5 pi, which is cool. Okay. Questions with that? Um, well, anything you learned in geometry is fair game, but I don't think I've ever seen the area formula for a pentagon prism up here without them giving it to you. So you can probably bet we'll give you that. Yes? Um, just depend on the question. If the question is something like B, I would say write out a sentence. The question was something like we had, how fast is the tip of the shadow moving? It's not indicating direction, so you can just straight up put your answer. Other questions? Okay. Um, so go ahead and clear off your desks and put away your related rate stuff, and then we'll get going on our quiz. So once again, your homework is the related rates problems from our previous review. And the answer key is... Okay.